welcome to Fingers, Thumbs and Fits. And today, well, we're starting a new campaign. We are starting Nova Atus Renaissance. And I have been looking forward to getting stuck into this. I've really been wanting to crack this box open since I got it. So I've painted up the models that I need. I've already posted a video on how to play it through the, uh, the tutorial mission. So I thought we'd get acquainted with our characters. So here we have Rebecca, who's a mage. We have Valerio, who's a knight. We have Gregorio, who's an alchemist. And we have Altair, who is an assassin. And he may look familiar to some people. But uh, let's have a look at some of these characters in depth and uh, see what they can do and see how they're going to work well together. Okay, so firstly, let's take a look at Rebecca, our mage. There she is. And her stats are... She's got 5 speed, which is the same across all characters across the board. She's got 2 dexterity. She has a physical strength of 1. She has a mental strength of four, which you'd think she would have a high one being a mage. And health of five, which again is the same across the board for all characters. She can upgrade to a necromancer, or interestingly enough as well, a chronomancer. And the skills she has available to her at apprentice level are Pyromancy, which allows her spells to gain the burn ability. She has Deceive, which dishes out distracted tokens to enemies. She has Doe Eyes, which gives her shielded tokens. She has Focus, which allows her to put a lucky token on one of her spells. She has Know Your Enemy, which allows friendly models, including herself, to roll an additional dice in attack tests against enemy models or she's got magic step which allows her to move after she's cast a spell so interesting character um she can also equip spells of the school of omnia I'm not quite sure what that means right now but i dare say as we go through we'll find that out and each character also has a passive ability and rebecca's one she gets a hero point each time she performs a test of a spell and succeeds, she requires the number of successes. Hero points go here when you acquire them, and they're different for each character, the, the conditions for acquiring them. And when she's accumulated four hero points, she, she can cast this spell down here, which is a bit of a you know more powerful spell than she usually has. So that's pretty cool. So... That's our mage Rebecca, let's move on to the next one. Next up is our knight squire Valerio. He has a speed of five, he has a dexterity of two, he has a physical strength of four, which you think he would be being a fighter. He has a mental strength of one and again a health of five. He can upgrade to either a knight or mercenary class and his squire abilities available to him are reckless charge which allows him to move as long as he can get adjacent to an enemy. Hawk Strike, which decreases an enemy's armor by one. Insult, which gives him plus one threat. He has Counter Attack, which allows you to inflict one unblockable damage on an enemy that attacks you and removes a shielded token. He has Witness Me, which gives him a lucky token if at the start of his activation another hero is within three squares and he has shove which kind of upgrades his tackle ability on his weapon and then his passive ability is perfect strike which he gains a hero point every time he gains a wound so he just gets angry for taking damage and then when he gets three hero points he can add two dice to any attack and re-roll any number of them. So that's a pretty cool ability to be fair. 
moving on now, we have our Plague Doctor Gregorio, who's uh, quite a cool model. I love the look of this guy. Right from the beginning, I wanted him in the party. He starts off as an alchemist. He's got five speed. He's got two dexterity. He's got three physical strength and two mental strength and health of five. He can upgrade to either a Scourge or a Chirurgeon and his alchemist skills available to him are Mo, which gives him plus one dice for an attack, Offensive Bastion, which gives him a shielded token if an attack uh, inflicts at least one damage, Studying the Stars, which allows him to gain tokens based on dice that he rolls, although he can get debuffs as well as buffs. Watch for the Stars, which allows him to give out Astro tokens. Alchemy, which is kind of his discipline, I guess, um, which allows him to give out Astro tokens as well. And Jinx Step, so which allows him to move if an enemy moves close to him. And his passive ability is something called Negredo. So each time he uses Alchemical Exchange, which I believe is one of his items, uh, he gets a hero point. And then when he's got six of them, he can inflict a poison token on up to three enemies within four squares of him. So swinging that sort of sensor around, I guess. And finally, we have our canon immigrant of the game, of the party. We have Altair from Assassin's Creed. And he's pretty much one of the reasons that I kind of got turned onto this game in the first place. Um, he's got a speed of five. He's got a dexterity of three. He's got a physical strength of three, a mental strength of one, and a health of five. He starts off as an assassin and he can upgrade to either a master or a mentor uh, but his assassin's abilities available to him are assassin strike which basically his hidden blade inflicts uh, unblockable damage sudden strike which allows him to move a space and then attack evasion which means he can reroll his defense dice Eye of the Eagle, which gives him all the keywords. Leap of Faith, which gives him jump and climb, and he can drop down from any height level without suffering any damage, which is interesting. It's like jumping off the building in the game and landing in the, uh, the carts full of hay. Um, and Silent Movement, which reduces the enemy's detection zone by two against Altair and his passive ability Requiescat and Pache he gets one hero point each time he uses his hidden blade and when he gets three of them he is able to gain plus two strength on his next attack and it doesn't cost any time which is interesting so it basically gives him a plus two strength free attack that is pretty cool so that's our party um, and I've just realized something as well the more I look at Valerio the more I was thinking he reminds me of somebody and I'm, for some strange reason it could be the pose, the armour, I don't know. He just reminds me a lot of Steiner from Final Fantasy IX. Um, but yeah, anyway, here's our party. A mage, a knight, an alchemist, and an assassin. And we are an interesting group of characters. I, we'll see how they, how they work well together. But I'm very much looking forward to getting into this campaign. So, please... Join me next time as we start the Nova Atus Renaissance campaign. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you'll be looking forward to it and I hope to see you then. So until then, I guess, keep on adventuring. I'll see you then.
Bye bye. I'd also like to give a shout out to my friends at the Nerd Hut in Ipswich. They have a great range of all things nerdy and gaming. So if you ever happen to be in the area, drop in and say hi and see what they've got available. And if retro video games are more your thing, please do check out my other channel, Retribution Gaming, where I do Let's Plays of old video games. I look at some more obscure bits and pieces and there might be a few updates of a video game project that I'm working on as well. So please do check that out. Give it a subscribe and a like. I'd really appreciate it. But yeah, this has been Fingers, Thumbs and Fits. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please do leave a like. That will help me out a hell of a lot. Subscribe so that you know when I've posted more content. And... I hope to see you for the next one. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.